Hi, this is Tracy Stackworth with Thrive Meetings and Events and the Eating and your host for the Eating at a Meeting podcast live presentation. Today we are chatting with Jennifer Senna of Visit Lauderdale and Heart Me. She is a meeting professional who had a heart attack two years ago. And in recognition of Heart Healthy Month, we're going to talk to her about what she thinks caused her heart attack, what happened that night, and what, how the heart attack has actually changed her life personally and professionally going forward. So hi, Jennifer. Hi, Tracy. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Um, thanks for being here. And um, I, it, it, we were just talking about this. This happened to you two years ago. You had a heart attack at age 47. Right. Can you, can you that's so scary. Yeah, it's okay. actually less than two years because it was on uh, November of 19. So it's not even oh, wow. full years yet. Um, do you want me to share my story of I what please, happened? Please do. Yes. Yeah. So I was at my son's birthday party. We were in the middle of cutting cake. Um, before doing that, I went to a restaurant. So we had just eaten. So I just started to feel nauseous and I you know, like didn't feel right. And I said, you know, what? it's probably food poisoning. That's exactly what I thought it was. I'm like, you know, it's food poisoning. So I went to the ladies room and I had diarrhea and then I got nauseous and I just started to sweat. So my girlfriend came in and she was like, Jen, are you okay? And I said, no, call an ambulance. And that's the thing with heart attacks with women. I had no pain. A lot of people said, do you have chest pain, arm pain? I didn't have any of that. Um, so luckily I was rushed to the hospital right away. And when I was there, they, you know how, when you go to the emergency room, it takes forever to get your results. Yes. The doctor came in right away. So they did an EKG. They came right away and she said, we have to transfer you to another hospital. Wow. And I said, okay. No one ever mentioned heart attack. So I really didn't know what was going on. Do you know what I mean? Like I knew right. it was serious. So the funny part of the story is that they transported me from one hospital to another via helicopter. And my <laughs> cousin and I, yeah, so my cousin and I have a um, list of 50 things that we want to do before we turn 50. Riding on a helicopter was mine. <laughs> so, you know, I was able to see the beautiful lights of, of New York City. And it was, it was wonderful. It was a great experience. But again, here I am being rushed over um, to a hospital. And when I got to Hackensack Hospital, we, I had the whole cardiac team waiting for me. So my sister had arrived. Yeah. And it was just, you know, quick, everything happened quick. The doctor was talking to me. Um, I could overhear another doctor talk to my sister and ask, do I have a living will? And my biggest fear was I was going to have open heart surgery. Right. So, you know, he was just talking me through it. He goes, we're going to go through your drawing. We're going to see what's going on with your heart and we'll figure it out from there. So as they wheeled me in, I went into cardiac arrest. And yeah, so that's the part that got really scary because I didn't know. And I, I just told the story the other day to someone and someone was like, cardiac arrest. I'm like, yeah, I kind of died for those few seconds. They revived me the first time. Uh -huh. The second time, so it happened twice. The second time, I could just hear them calling me and I guess I was, you know, waking up and they're like, Jen, Jen. And I could feel my body like fall back. So they did the whole procedure as they went in, he put three stents into my heart and I had two blocked arteries, one at a hundred percent. The other was 98%. And wow. it, yeah, it was just surreal. You know, when I think about it, I'm just like, wow, I, I literally could have died that night. Mm -hmm. um, but when they went in and I guess when they put in the, the stent, I said to the nurse who was next to me, I was like, I feel like I could see. And I think I just felt that blood rushing through my entire body. And I felt like I was in a fog and I just opened up and I was able to see like, it was like a clear, like awakening. So it was really strange. Uh, but then when we were done, you know, he gave me the news and the next morning he said, you were lucky to be alive. And I'm like, what do you think caused, like, you know, why am I still here? And he was like, you know, and again, I'm a, I'm a faithful person. So I believe mm -hmm. in God and I, I joke around and say, God wasn't done with me yet. You know, I still have more <laughs> to do in this world. So that was how it happened. And again, like I said, no previous, you know, pain or anything like that. So it was just, it was pretty scary. It was a scary night for sure. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, because you hear, 
and a friend of mine just had a stroke and her left arm went numb. She went in to talk to her husband and he couldn't understand a word she was saying. And she's 52 and. And I was 47 at the time. Yeah. So you never know. Yeah. You don't know. And it turned out she actually had a stroke, but, and which actually this is even scarier is they found a tumor on her pituitary gland as a result of that. So, wow. so you don't know, but so what do you think caused your heart attack? Do you have any thoughts about that? I do. I had a lot of time to think, right? <laughs> um, just my lifestyle. I, I say it all the mm -hmm. time. I did this to myself and I want to be a you know spokesperson, especially for people in the meetings industry. Um, we don't sleep, right? We, you know, we don't sleep. We, well, for me, I was, I've been working home at home for over 15 years now, or maybe less than that, probably about 10 years or so. So I could sit at my desk for hours and I wouldn't get up. You know, you rush to go get something to eat, you come back and you're working again. Um, I didn't exercise, I'll admit it. I went through my, you know, yo-yo dieting, yo-yo uh -huh. exercise. Oh, I joined a gym and then I stopped going. So definitely the lack of exercise, lack of movement. And then the other part is the stress. I never did things to de-stress myself. Okay. You know, and all of our jobs are stressful, right? You can't eliminate stress from your life, but right. what are you doing for yourself to just decompress? And, you know, at the end of the day, whether it's a breathing technique or, you know, what, what is it that you're doing? So like I said, I blame myself. I've learned the hard way, right? This is definitely a, a big lesson to learn with, uh, changing my lifestyle. So there's a lot of new things that I've incorporated in my life and I'm still a work in progress, still losing the weight. It's, it's, uh -huh. you know, it's definitely uh, something I need to work on and be conscious of for sure. And what does your doctor say after the stents? I mean, I've heard that that happens like, you, oh my God, you can now breathe because you're getting the oxygen that you need. But what has your doctor said to you about what you need to do? So uh, all of this happened in November. Mm -hmm. uh, beginning of December, I started cardiac rehab. Never okay. knew that existed. I had no idea that there's cardiac rehab. So I was scheduled to go for three months, but because of, because of COVID, I sort of stopped and started again. Uh -huh. But it, that's just education. It's you're there for an hour, three days a week. You learn the exercise. They monitor you. They put monitors on your heart while you're working out so they can check what's going on. They check your blood pressure before and after. Then there was workshops. So they teach you how to eat. They um, explain to you things about your heart, like just basic stuff. And again, you know, we have biology class where in high school, no one really goes and talks right. to you about your heart and how it works. So it's about the education. Um, and like I said, just motivation, how to eat. And, you know, it was just a whole program. I was one of the youngest people there. That was the other thing. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was myself and one other woman. I think she was in her 50s, but I was the youngest. Everyone there was old, you know, a lot older. Some have had multiple heart attacks. So I think for me also just watching them and seeing them, like, I don't want that to be me. You know, once is enough. I, you know, I don't want to do that again. So um, cardiac rehab definitely helped and it got me started on okay. what I needed to do. And it was, it's all about the education because what you don't know, you don't know. You know, right. so, yeah. Well, and one of my one of my guests a couple of months ago, Dr. Sabrina, um, she she's trying to educate her clients so they don't get to the position that you are in. And doctors you know, and even from what she said, they're not trained about let's be proactive and preventative versus being mm -hmm. reactive. And that's unfortunate where a lot of our medical practices is about reaction versus and let's here's the medicine, you know, take, take blood pressure pills. Here's right. you know, all of that. So you're absolutely right. It's the preventative right. for sure. Um, so one of the things I did and I was motivated to do is I started my own podcast called Heart Me. And it's about right. educating people. And, you know, I definitely have lapsed on it because of COVID. So I de mm -hmm. this is definitely motivating me to get back on it. But I have, you know, about four episodes already. And um, I had a lot of feedback. People are interested to know. And like I said, if you don't have someone educating you, you're not going to know the difference. And I tell everyone, mm -hmm. look at me as... An example, you don't want to see what happened to me happen to you. And I was lucky because I survived. Not everyone survives this. Right. Well, and it's actually even, well, not even scarier, but it is scarier that you had to leave your son's birthday party 
that this happened at that. And so he had to have been pretty freaked out. He was fine. <laughs> <laughs> I had two children. Yeah, this is again, it was a, a movie birthday party. So uh -huh. we cut cake before the movie. Okay. Luckily, I have a great support system. I have family and friends that just like took over. The kids had no idea I was gone. Wow. Yeah. And I really was reluctant in telling them what happened. Like they knew I was in the hospital. They knew something happened, but mm -hmm. it was months later that I wanted to reassure them that I was okay when mm -hmm. I finally had the conversation and talked to them about it. And I'm slowly but surely trying to change their eating habits as well. Cause I realized it starts when you're young, you know, right. for me, I was always, I can't say I was a, a chubby, chubby kid, but, you know, I always thought I was heavy, you know, even, you know, when I was a kid and I look at my pictures now, I was like, I think I was okay. But when you look at it, I'm like, no, I, you know, I ate the processed foods. I ate all the, the pizza, the soda. Um, I used to miss soda. Now I don't anymore. So mm -hmm. a lot has changed in how I eat. Yeah. So, you know, as a meeting professional, and you said it a few minutes ago, what, you know, there's somebody that I know that had gastric bypass surgery, right? And he didn't in the industry and he didn't tell anybody that he had it. He was just kind of, you know, stepping back and avoiding it. But, you know, going as a salesperson, he was a hotel salesperson as well, but going to having a dinner with a group of 10 people and you're not eating your filet mignon and broccoli because it's too hard for you to eat or it's not what your doctor prescribed for you to eat. Mm -hmm. That's got to be very hard, you know, situation mm -hmm. and so as a hotel salesperson you know what what have you made and granted it happened just before covid so you really haven't been on any sales trips but what are you going to do going forward yeah well luckily um i did go to fort lauderdale and again i work for visit lauderdale so uh -huh. i went to fort lauderdale that january for a sales meeting and for the first time in my life i noticed what was on the buffet and what was interesting is when it came to dessert, there was like with the lunch, there were options. I think I got the veggie wrap, right? So it was like hummus and veggies and I was fine with that. But for dessert, there was not one piece of fruit. It was just all carbs, all sweet. And I looked at it and I was like, wow, for the first time I was that attendee that had that dietary restriction mm -hmm. and it felt like, what's there for me. Do you know what I mean? So um, what I've learned, and again, through my education, I'm learning that when I do go to restaurants, I order things, no butter, no added salt. Um, I limit, obviously now with COVID, I've limited my, you know, ordering out, but it's just knowing what my options are and just making the right choices. I think that's the hardest part is you, you know, have that little uh, devil and the, you know, the angel on your shoulder right. uh -huh. saying go for the sweets or go for the bad food. But no, you really have to stop and think. And, you know, yeah, you might want to what they call cheat, but to be honest with you, it's not worth it. You know, right. and I'd rather go to Whole Foods and buy better foods than have a medical bill from my heart attack. Do you know what I mean? Like when you think yeah. about it, the mm -hmm. money that you spend, you know, on eating healthy, because again, it's more expensive, it's, it's right. better, but think about what you're going to save in the long run for your health. And that's how I've learned to reprogram myself and tell myself, okay, eat better foods, make better choices, nothing processed. So right. it's for that person who's an attendee, or even the meeting planner that's looking at that menu, offer the options, give people the choices. And I know it's hard because, you know, there's an allergy, there's this, there's that, but try to find options that can sort of fit everyone, you know, and, yeah. and especially when it comes to the sweets and desserts, like have fruit, you know, and that's what I go for. That's my go-to is fruit now. Yeah. I mean, it, it, and it's hard to look at a banquet menu and I have in my every meal matters course, we're going to decipher menus um, in a couple of weeks, but it's hard to look at that menu and find some healthy options because you don't know where the heavy cream is or how much salt is added into all of that. And so it's, it's much more important conversation for us to have with chefs and for our hotel partners to actually go ahead and give us that information mm -hmm. and provide heart healthy options on the standard menus versus it being this, Hey, here's our separate. Oh, you need this. Here's our separate menu. You, you have, we shouldn't have to ask for it anymore. 
Exactly. You're absolutely yeah. right. Especially with the vegan options. Yeah. Um, you know, I was I would never ever pick a vegan option. When I would take clients out, you know, my motto was order something that I don't make at home. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I would have, you know, something that was probably not the healthiest choice. Right. But again, I would never order a vegan option, right? Or a vegetarian option. And now I'm more prone to doing that because I know that's the healthier option. And I think what I've seen a lot in restaurants is, and, and I know this now, like vegetarian meals, they're delicious, but they just need to be seasoned the right way. It's right. it's not something bland. It's not just, you know, a piece of vegetable or or some lettuce and, you know, right. make it out. but there's a lot of things you can incorporate and just have it taste really good. And why not have that on your menu? Right. You know? Like it wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt. There's a restaurant here in um, where I live in New Bern, North Carolina, and on their menu is boring chicken and broccoli. <laughs> and I'm like, and it is it is like a hotel, sorry, hotels, but it is a hotel dried piece of chicken with cold broccoli. And that is completely opposite of what you just described. But that mm -hmm. would, if it had flavor to it, if it had, if it was warm mm -hmm. and not dried out, that would be a great option. Mm -hmm. And using the word boring is such a bad rap, right? I know. Like, it should yeah. be like healthy or amazing chicken and broccoli or something like that. Right, so yeah. you're absolutely right. You know, yeah. it's, it's getting a bad rap, the healthy options that we should go for. Exactly. So there's a story I told you um, about a guy, he's a planner that I met at a convention years ago and he's vegan and he went on a site visit, got up really early in the morning and I've told the story a couple of times, but go to the site visit and they took him to a restaurant and everybody else had three course meal and all he had at the restaurant and this was probably 10 years ago was that boring the boring lettuce you know that's all he had and everybody else was eating three courses and same thing happened to dinner and he after learning what i do and educating on this he was like what should i do and i'm like okay well if that hotel salesperson or that convention and visitors bureau salesperson didn't recognize that you had told them that they were vegan and this is what are they going to do for your attendees if they're not even doing it for the guy who signs the check mm -hmm. and the question that i ask a lot of you know convention and visitors bureaus and hotel sales people i'm like what would your boss say if you lost a hundred and twenty five thousand dollar piece of business right. because you didn't pay attention to their dietary needs mm -hmm. and that's so important it is um, it's tough because you know I'm representing all the sales people on the CBB side and the hotel side. So right. for me, it's, you know, asking the question. I think I, I would hope that planner made a comment to them so that they could rectify it because, mm -hmm. you know, shame on them for not noticing or not realizing it or just thinking about it ahead of time. But if at the moment the planner said something to them, right. they have the time to recover and make it happen. Right. And I know a chef could put something together that's, you know, um, being able to meet his requirements. Right. However, um, and I know we do this and I've done this before, you know, when someone's going to come in for a site inspection, you give them that letter. I mean, that form that says, you know, your preferences. Right. And, you know, you'll ask about, you know, especially if they're going to stay at a hotel, you know, what do they enjoy? What do they like to eat? You know, mm -hmm. uh, what's your favorite drink? So on there should be, do you have any dietary needs that we should be aware right. of? You know, your, con you know, your emergency contact, all that stuff. But you have them fill it out for a reason. And right. if you're going to pay attention to that, then, you know, if you lose the business because of that, shame on you, you know? Right. So mm -hmm. I just think um, we should ask the questions. I think it's really important. Yeah. But then also paying attention to those things. And sometimes people don't want to divulge right there. And mm -hmm. so that's the other thing. It's, you know, paying attention to what's going on and just notice. Um, and again, I've been, I've been very sort of um, aware of colleagues of mine or people that I travel with often who are mm -hmm. vegetarian. And yep. if, you know, if I look at it from their point of view, and this is before my heart attack, like, oh yeah. And she'll, she'll go to receptions and not eat anything because she has nothing to eat. Yeah. 
Right. And I never thought of it like that. But now that I have a restriction or, you know, I'm watching my diet, right. it, I'm very aware of it. And I think that that's something that we need to be put put ourselves in their shoes. Right. To realize like if you're going to walk through a, you know, a, a reception and look through the menu or, you know, just go through that aisle and you don't see any options if you are vegan or whatever restriction you might have, that's just going to be such a bad experience for them. Right. Um, to attend your event. So yeah. I, I really think um, paying attention, being aware, asking the questions, but when you ask, make sure that you're going to deliver on what they need. I think that's the most important piece. So true. I mean, there's so many people that, that ask the question and my friend Nora has said this too. It's like, if you ask me, if I tell you that I'm gluten-free and then I get to the buffet and it says, oh, if you need gluten-free, talk to such and such. And she's like, I already told you that I was gluten-free. Exactly. Why do I need to go and make another special request that's art that's hidden behind the, you know, the banquet hall, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So and I just took my CMP and that was one of the uh, modules that we read. Oh, my light's going off. I'm sorry. Um, one of the mod modules that we talked about was you know, just attending to the attendees' needs because again, it's all about them. If they're not going to have a good experience, mm -hmm. you kind of like, you know, when you get that survey and you get the negatives, it could right. be something as easy as that. And it's yeah. it's fixable, you know, it's something mm -hmm. that you could fix. And why make them stand out and get up and have to go tell someone, oh, I need a gluten feel free meal when it should have been there for them to begin with. So right, exactly. And Food is such a big part of our events. I mean, cost wise, as well as experience wise. And it's probably something that we always, people always talk about. Right. You know, and, you know, why, but I, I've been saying for a while now, it's like our most expensive expense or our most costly expense on our budgets, but it's the thing that we probably spend the least amount of time on. You're right. You're absolutely right. You think about the content and the AV right, and yeah. all of that, but you're right. When you're holding a meeting, the most expensive piece of it is the food and beverage. Right. Yep. Yeah. And so many parts and pieces to it. And even I was prepping for one of my modules today on that. And even how you're going to display the food and beverage, you know, or where is it going to be? And so and giving maps to people saying, hey, this is where, you know, this the gluten free places gluten-free options are going to be in this part of the ballroom or whatever. How do you incorporate all of that by, but communicating it exactly and providing the options. So what do you, you know, for, for visit Lauderdale, I mean, are you educating our friends, Gilbert? I don't know if he's, if he's <laughs> hopefully he's on, he should be on. <laughs> I mean, are you, I mean, I think this is a great opportunity in the position that you have working for a CVB to educate your coworkers, but then also to educate your, your, your clients, your planners. Mm -hmm. So luckily the pandemic did happen, right? Let's right. talk about the silver lining about the exactly. pandemic. So, so some of the things that it allowed me to do is become creative in engaging my attendees. And Coincidentally, and this uh, of course wasn't planned, the, the Friday before my heart attack, my heart attack mm -hmm. happened on a Friday, November 8th. On November 1st, my coworker and I, um, Agnes, I'll give her a shout out, Agnes Zaransky, we both handled the Northeast accounts. The two of us had a wellness event and it was mm -hmm. um, cycling at Life, Life Fitness Okay. And we had, I think, about 12 planners with us, and it was a spin class. So we had some food, we did our presentation, we went to the spin class, and then we were done. But it was so well attended, so well received, everyone liked it. So we kind of just kind of kept that on when the pandemic happened with all this, you know, Zoom and stuff. So I started doing um, meditation Mondays and we did that for the month of April and May. Every Monday morning, we started with meditation. It was great. Like I said, it was so well attended and we needed it at that time. You know, like that was the other thing. And I was trying to incorporate tools that I started using. You know, I was doing, I'm doing yoga now. Um, so meditation Mondays we did. Agnes was doing uh, workout Wednesdays. Okay. And then, yep. And then we sort of pivoted and shifted because we're like, okay, we're not going to become this fitness, you know, uh, class where everyone's always just going to come to that. But I, I did a corporate wellness series and that also was very well attended. It was five weeks. 
That's how I had Jim Spello speak at one of uh -huh. our events. And then I had Liz Cohen, who's a health coach. And she just had, you know, it was half an hour of quick tidbits of always having water at your desk. Um, she, she talked about sleep. I know, you know what? I should have mine. Shame on me. I don't. And I'm like, oh, I should just have it. But I don't. I had my smoothie this morning. So I, I had that, but I didn't bring my water up. But stuff like that, Um, getting a standing desk, because now that we're all working from home, just a standing desk. So I stand sometimes, you know, when I'm in a meeting or just listening, like instead of sitting down and being mobile, right. um, I just bought a, a stepper. So different things like that. But I was trying to incorporate it in our client events. And again, very well received. I'm trying to think of what else we did, the meditation, the spin class. Um, oh, I know we also did. And this was the, the last um, client event I did before the pandemic happened, but we did a meditation and journaling session wow. with planners from Helms Briscoe. And that was in person. It was in Brooklyn. Um, and we did that before they started their meeting. And again, after we were done, we had, you know, five, 10 minutes to do our presentation, but it was just different ways of engaging our clients and tie it into the wellness fitness and again with Fort right. Lauderdale the sun and you yep. know so many things that we could do you know where it comes to doing things outdoors um so again we just kind of tied it all together and those are some of the initiatives that we've done um now so it was awesome. yeah I mean because we planners we have so much on our plates right we're we're ordering the AV we're ordering the the speaker gifts and setting up the stage and the room design and whatever. And so food and beverage does become, I can, I see how it does get put into the back burner and that we rely on some of our um, catering partners to do that for us, but it is a lack of education. And I do think COVID has given us the opportunity mm -hmm. to take a look back and or sit back and or stand up and look at how we can change some of the ways that we do our events and what we're offering. IMEX is and a lot of other conferences have added that meditation room and the wellness mm -hmm. area. MPI has done that as well. And um, I think that adds a lot more. And you may think that your construction, you know, convention doesn't need that, but those guys are just as stressed mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen in the construction industry are just as stressed out as that if, you know other people are, and it can add so much more to our. Event. Right. A lot of the industry organizations do do that. Um, I know PCMA has done that for years already. You know whether it was like the run beforehand and after. So um, again, I never used to be that person that would participate because it's like no, I'm traveling. I'm, but how many times did I pack sneakers? So I was going to run or I was going right. to walk, didn't do it, but now I will, you know, and yeah. I, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's definitely a, a mind shift for me. And, um, you know, I've lost weight already and, you know, just doing different things to, to better my health. And I never thought about it before, you know, and, and like right. I said, shame on me, but I definitely have a second chance. So I'm making my, uh, my adjustments. No, that's awesome. And yeah. You know, food is such a big part of that. So tell us what what's your favorite thing? You said you make a smoothie. So what do you put in your smoothie? Oh, my favorite. And I not I know not everyone likes avocado, uh -huh. but my go to is avocado and pineapple. OK. And as the, a smoothie or okay. I'll put like a full, you know, one avocado and a little bit of frozen frozen pineapple so I don't have to add ice because it's already frozen. Okay. And then my liquid, instead of using water, I use this, um, it's suja, it's a green drink. It tastes okay. horrible, it tastes horrible. <laughs> and that's what, like, I would never drink it alone, like, you know, by itself, but I put that in the smoothie and then um, collagen protein and just some other, you know, stuff. I, I take a, um, a garlic uh, capsule, uh, a garlic uh, extract as okay. a supplement. So I just open up the capsule now because I take so many pills now. So I'm like, I have any capsules, I'll just open up, put the powder in there and just mi mix it all up. But that green drink has celery juice and, you know, uh, cucumber juice, kale juice. So it has a lot of good things in there and I don't want to drink it by itself. So the pineapple will give it some sweetness. Right. Yeah. The avocado, you know, avocado is so healthy for you on a daily basis. So I'll just put that in. So it's creamy, it's sweet, it's healthy. And that's my go-to in the morning for sure. 
Okay, good. That's, and we don't do, you know, our conference meetings are typically pastries mm -hmm. and it's hard to even get hard boiled eggs on there or whatever, but it's, it's so carb loaded and that is so, you know, refreshing of a drink that you can offer. And I know I the shooters, right? Like you right. always hear about how, but that's not enough. You know what I mean? Like the shooters, the shooters, it's like, all right, it's like a taste test. Right. Uh, but why not have that there? You know, have, yeah. you know, smoothie options where they could just make them fresh for you. I mean, that would be awesome as an action station, right? <laughs> right. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to worry about some of the, the different dietary needs when you're creating those, but yeah, it's, it's a great option to do. And are you, for lunches and dinners, are you eating um, salads and lots of vegetables? What are you doing with that? Yeah, so my other breakfast go-to is oatmeal. Never yep. liked oatmeal, but I like it now. And everyone used to say, oh, put a little cinnamon, do a little this. So I remember when I first came home from the hospital, it's like, okay, let me eat the oatmeal. I would put like a piece of blueberry and I'm like, all right, this is for all the donuts I ever had in the morning. This is like, you know, yeah, just take, and it wasn't a punishment. It was more like, all right, Jen, you've been there, done that. Now eat the healthy stuff. Right. So meal prepping goes a long way. If I don't meal prep, for, and I don't even have to do it for the week. It just could be for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. um, Brussels sprouts is my new favorite food. I, I pasta, used to, yeah, pasta used to be my favorite, but not anymore. Now it's mm -hmm. Brussels sprouts. So I'll cut up some Brussels sprouts and put them in the oven. I'll put them, you know, in a container. So for lunch now, I could just get some, you know, spinach, put some Brussels sprouts, put a little olive oil, get mm -hmm. some um, chickpea, you know, and just put a hodgepodge of stuff that I like. Right. And I'm only creating something new. So that's the other thing. I get bored of the same food. So at least if I could create a salad with, you know, sweet potatoes and, you know, just put different good stuff in there, then I'm set. But right. meal prepping is key. I was doing meal prepping with some friends before COVID. Um, every Sunday, we would all make one meal and then pack uh -huh. them up and just share the meals throughout. Oh, that's a oh, great awesome. idea. So awesome. You know, we had a turkey meatloaf and then somebody made the vegetables and then we just, you know, swapped each other's meals. And, and it was a good way to try different stuff. Right. I'm a single mom. So I don't need a lot of food. But if I made a good batch, then I could give some to my friends and we would swap food. So that was a, a great thing. But then, you know, COVID happened. So we kind of stopped it. But right. yeah, that was something we could, you know, take up again. But that's meal prepping is key. Um, I love that. That's a that's a neighborhood family meal. Yes. You know, and you can have it in your own homes and things like that. So mm -hmm. I love that idea. That's very yeah. fun. Um, the what have your kids profited or benefited from <laughs> your eating healthier, or how how are they taking that? Let's see. They're probably not happy with me. Um, so one of the things is McDonald's. We go to McDonald's once a month now, okay. and before I would pick them up from school if I didn't feel like eating or if I knew I had a, a a very hectic day it would be like mom let's go to McDonald's okay and I would get McDonald's with them right it was really easy not to like to say oh I don't want to cook today so now we have things in place McDonald's once a month and I don't want to deprive them of certain foods but it's just right. you know let me cook more um what i've also done is incorporate like you have to try a new food so you know we'll try a new vegetable and you know they still don't like brussels sprouts but you know maybe one day we'll get there and then i know two children's uh you know palates are not sophisticated so i get that you know so now we're just um i'm getting them to cook more with me because i think that helps awesome. they see what's going in there now you know we'll make a quesadilla and now instead of buying a flour tortilla i'm buying the corn ground a uh, stone ground corn tortilla so again it's making those little changes and little options mm -hmm. um, but getting them incorporated in making it um, and then the other thing is I've limited how many snacks they can have. So they can eat as many fruits and vegetables, but any like, you know, processed snacks, I hide it. And it's almost like a joke because I'll hide, you know, the little Rice Krispie treats and I'm, you know, so I'll let them have it, but right. not all the time, not, not the way they had it before. So, you know, they're still kids. You don't want to deprive yeah. them of, of what they want, but you know, just in moderation. And then, and if I could teach them that along the way, I think that's huge. That is huge. 
Um, so one other thing with about the Brussels sprouts, I do the same thing. I put them on salads, but I shave them. So it, oh, yes. of course, dice them up and put them on. After uh, you cook them or before you cook them? I actually put them raw on salads. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I, like and, and I, a I, like, I do like yeah. my Brussels sprouts yeah. cooked a little, but I've had it raw. But again, I'm just so open to eating yeah. vegetables that I didn't eat before. And, you know, uh, turnip, uh, parsnip, like there's just so many yeah. different vegetables out there. The varieties are incredible. And, and um, beets, like I like beets now, like just different things that I never used to eat before. And it's all good. That's the other yeah. part of it. Like it all tastes really good. So it does. And it's just, you said it earlier, it's that flavor profile and how do you spice it up some and, you know, drizzling olive oil on beets and Brussels sprouts and salt and pepper and just roasting them in the oven for a good 30 to 40 minutes right. makes them so sweet. It's so mm -hmm. delicious. Yeah. So what, what tips do you have for other people in our industry like you that salespeople, let's just talk salespeople to say, Hey, what do you, what, do, these are the changes that I'm going to make for my clients going forward. And my, um, what do you have some, some final tips? I would say definitely be aware of what their needs are and, and you don't need them. So, and again, I remember not too long ago, I had a, a site inspection and the woman told me she was a vegetarian. So one of the restaurants that I selected to bring her to, mm -hmm. I knew had more of a variety and it wasn't a steakhouse. Do you okay. know what, I mean? what mm -hmm. that's the worst thing to do? Take a vegetarian to a steakhouse. <laughs> you know, like probably the smell alone would like turn them off. So like I said, just be aware, listen, ask the questions, especially when it comes to health and dietary needs. I think that's important. Um, I'm all about creativity. So think about those creative events. People come to them, you know, and it's always like, oh, you know, it has to include food. And sometimes it really doesn't, you know, why, mm -hmm. why not do something that's fitness related? I think that's really important. Um, the other thing is, I would say doing things to help de-stress. And breathing is huge. Sleeping is huge. Again, things that we don't think about. But you know, if you're gonna do a site, maybe don't do it so early. You know, don't yeah. start at eight o'clock. Maybe start at eight thirty or nine to give them time to go to the gym. Or you know, say, hey, I'll meet you at eight or uh, eight o'clock so that we could go for a walk first. Or you know, what I mean, like just be conscious of the steps that you could take. Everyone's wearing the watch, right? I have my right. watch and you'll see everyone's wearing like, an, yeah, everyone's wearing a watch. And it's just like, you know, be aware of that. Like, hey, let's maybe go for a walk because we're gonna get more steps and sort of make it fun. But again, I think yeah. being creative and creativity is really just finding a solution a different way. Yeah. So that's why creativity is. You don't have to be a rocket science and say, oh, you know, I'm not an artist, I can't be creative. You can, it's just finding yeah. a solution. Yeah. Well, and I actually, on Friday, one a woman who works with the downtown business district, she lives in my neighborhood and she's like, we were meeting for the first time. She's like, do you want to go on a walk? And because we live in the same neighborhood, so we met at the park and we went on a walk. And it was so nice to get outside, enjoy the sun and and have a conversation. And so Instead we're of going to a cafe, sitting down and maybe going for Starbucks and having a piece of cake or, you, do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you're way, just get up and go for a walk and have a meeting that way and just connect with people while you're walking. Yeah, exactly. And it, that reminds me of this. There's this, somebody took a picture of me doing it. It was at the Connect convention in Utah a couple of years ago, but I did a walk and talk session. So we did, instead of sitting and looking at PowerPoint presentations, we walked through the convention center and talked about the, all the different areas of food and beverage. And it was such a great experience. You do need to make sure people know that you're going to do a walk and talk so they, they're they aware. Right. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. So the last question, I well, two questions for you. So what makes a safe and inclusive food and beverage experience for you? I know. <laughs> Well, like I said, my, my, it's changed for me, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, now when I'm going to go to an event, I want to find those options. I, I want to find almond milk. I want to find, you know, things that for me never made a difference. So that's the part that's really important for me. <gasps> sorry, that's my son. So that's sorry, okay. you know, the organic stuff is always good. But yeah, he knows I was on, on live. So he's just being a nine-year-old boy. Okay. <laughs> um, but just having the options. Like for me, it's I'm gonna be looking for 
options. So, you know, the, the local, um, local fruits and vegetables and just, you know, paying attention to those things now, it, it's, I'm looking at it from a different set of eyes. So for me, it's just changed so much. But to me, that's the things that I'm going to be looking out for because it's going to be so important. Okay, that's great. And then what is your, besides Brussels sprouts, what's your favorite food and beverage? Um, besides Brussels sprouts, oh, sweet you- potatoes. No, that's okay. No, sweet potatoes. I, and again, it's it's replacing whether it's French fries or anything or, you know, mashed potatoes. Mm-hmm. Now I'll do sweet potatoes. Okay. Um, so again, for me, it's foods that are not fried. That's another thing. Any, you know, fried foods. I used to eat fried foods all the time. So just, um, fruits and vegetables, sweet potatoes and, and Brussels sprouts are my go-to now. So I'll I'll always have them. Um, cauliflower is another one. And now cauliflower, I think takes the sweet, it goes above the sweet potatoes. (laughs) Yeah. No, if I think about it now, yeah. Cauliflower. I love cauliflower now. And you can do so much with it, right? You can. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I would never have said vegetables were my favorite. Mine was my go to was always pasta, but I love how I could just say it like vegetables now, you know, sweet That's potatoes. Awesome. Yeah, it's just awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, definitely so, a big change for me. The um, so for some pasta options, have you there's some gluten free ones that are made from mm-hmm. beans, legumes, yep. um, such good flavor, and which is in a whole nother hidden protein. Yes. protein that you can have. So I think pea pasta, red yeah. lentil pasta, I've done it all. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Good. Awesome. And do you have a favorite beverage besides water? Um, salsa water. Yep. Remember how I mentioned soda before? Uh-huh. So I always liked the fizz. I liked the bubbles. Yep. Mm-hmm. So flavored salsa water. Um, and again, I was never a huge water drinker. Now I am, and I'll, you know, I'll fl- you know, put some flavor with, you know, a slice of lemon or something uh-huh. like that. But I was such a soda junkie that salsa water is my go-to, and red wine. I never used to drink red wine. I was always a white wine drinker, and like this, I turned into red wine because I know it's good for your heart. So, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So again, small changes, but I think that's what that's what it takes to become a habit, right? And just right. realize that you don't have to get rid of everything, and it doesn't have. It's not a diet. I will never call it a diet because I'm not dieting. I'm just changing how I'm eating now. That's a great thought. Mm-hmm. And and then just paying attention, and I think going back to your symptoms that you felt nauseous. You had no, you didn't get the tingling and anything like that. And so you had no symptoms, but we just need to pay attention to those, especially as women, because ours comes in such different things. So the other thing, oh, I'm so ahead. sorry. My last comment is I tell everyone I was going for my annual checkups, right? But I never went to check my heart. So that's the other thing. If you go for your annual checkup and remember, they're not a cardiologist. They're your right. PCP. So they might say, oh, you know, your your heart's a little elevated. I mean, your blood pressure is a little elevated. Maybe your cholesterol is a little elevated, but it doesn't hurt to go to a cardiologist and just have a stress test and figure out what's going on with your heart. I'm right. telling everyone to do that because we're checking like the whole body, but we're not checking our heart. And that's the most important muscle in the body. So yeah, because without yeah, it, it, number it. one, yeah. <laughs> That's such a good, oh, I'm so glad you ended on that because that's a really important message and for all of us to do because we don't, they just check your heart rate with the stethoscope mm-hmm. and that's kind of it. Yep. Yeah. So thank you for that um, yes. message. Mm-hmm. And thank you for sharing your story with us. It's, it's really important for all of us to understand that taking care of us, taking care of me, heart with, heart with Jennifer. <laughs> heart with Jennifer. Me, yeah. Yep. Heart me with Jennifer. Find her on Facebook, find her on Twitter as well, Twitter and or Instagram as well. Um, she's there to give you lots of great information about how to keep yourself and your heart healthy. Yeah. So thank you for tuning in to Every Meal Matt, Every Meeting. Oh my gosh, I just screwed that up. <laughs> thank you for tuning in to Eating at a Meeting. This is a weekly live broadcast podcast um, here on the eating in a meeting Facebook group and the thrive meetings and events Facebook page. So, and you can hear us on all podcast platforms. So make sure you check us out until next time, stay safe and eat well. Thanks. Bye. Bye.